Storytelling in video games is one of the coolest things out there. Video games can give you a story unlike any other form of media, where they allow the player to interact in so many creative ways that it leaves an unforgettable experience in your mind. Of all the storytelling methods there are out there, lore is probably one of the coolest ones for video games. I mean, any sort of media can have lore to its story, any book or movie or what have you, but video games can allow a player to discover the lore themselves in so many interesting ways ways that it just, it's, it's such an exciting and thrilling experience for a player when lore is done right. But of course the issue is that lore is really squandered very, very often in many, many video games. There are so many games out there that don't know how to do lore properly and so many games that struggle with it. League of Legends being a perfect example, not really knowing how much lore they want to have, how they want to implement it into the gameplay, how they want to give it to players without shoving it down the throats of players that don't want lore to have anything to do with their competitive experience. So today we're going to be taking a look at a game that does lore better than any other video game that I have ever played at least, and that is, of course, none other than RuneScape. You might be surprised to hear me say that RuneScape is a game that does its lore so well. It was one of the earliest MMOs to come out, first being released in 2001, and has been constantly updated and played even to this day. The RuneScape I'm talking about specifically is the version that existed from around 2004 to 2008-ish, which is what most people consider its golden age, and which you can still play today ever since the legacy servers were released around two years ago. See, this early version of RuneScape, which was first conceptualized as an MMO, that you could play through a browser and that wasn't super hard on PCs was released in a time that the developers didn't want to focus too heavily on the story of the world. There was no grand scheme for lore with elaborate cutscenes or anything along those lines in its early days, or at least that wasn't the main focus, so the story that did exist was told through a different method, the gameplay. Many separate mechanics throughout the game introduce players very slowly and subtly to the lore of the world and actually uncover an incredibly deep and exciting history for those that want to follow it, and it does all that just through encouraging you to play the game. For instance, one thing that RuneScape does right, a lot better than many other MMOs out there, is quests. Quests in RuneScape aren't ever go kill 10 goblins and I'll give you a little bit of gold and experience, they're much more in depth than that. Maybe one quest has you help a Dr. Fen constrain create a monster doing some small tasks for him until the job is complete, while another has King Arthur send you after the whole Grail. These quests can range from you doing all sorts of things and helping out all sorts of peoples and races, but not only do these quests have much more compelling storylines, they have much more exciting rewards. In addition to the usual golden experience and various skills that you'll receive, some quests give you something more. For instance, the Ghosts Ahoy quest, where you help a port of ghosts that are trapped, prevented from passing on to the next life by a cruel necromancer who came to their town a hundred years ago, will reward you with a special bottle of of Ectophuntus that you can use to teleport to that town on your own. This is incredibly useful since without it, it can be as long as a 10 to 20 minute walk from the nearest teleport if you want to go anywhere within that general vicinity. By encouraging players to do quests in this way and leaving all these little stories and clues to the lore throughout them, RuneScape gives players a little taste of the deep history that lies beneath the surface, open to anyone that wants to jump down the rabbit hole. There's actually a lot of other ways the game introduces you to the history of its world. I could ramble on for hours about all the other ways out there, but let's keep it simple today and focus on quests, specifically one of the most exciting and difficult quests in the game. There's a quest in RuneScape called Desert Treasure that gives you access to some of the most powerful combat magic spells in the game as a reward, which obviously entices a lot of players to do it. It's an amazing quest where the player is tasked with finding a quote-unquote desert treasure, which he soon learns consists of four diamonds that have magical properties which imprison an ancient warrior in a pyramid deep within the desert. To get these diamonds, the player has to defeat four bosses, all of which are scattered all over the continent, going so far down uncharted and dangerous territories sometimes, there's a 0% chance you'll run into another living soul, NPC, or other player. As you continue on throughout your quest, you learn that this warrior, who you choose to free, used to fight for a god called Zeros, who most people across RuneScape know nothing of. In RuneScape, there's three main gods, Saradoman, who's considered the good guy, Zamorak, who represents chaos, evil, and everything bad, and then Guthix, who represents neutrality and balance. It turns out that these 
four bosses are servants of Zamorak, and as you go further and further throughout the quest, you learn that Zamorak didn't actually always used to be a god. It wasn't until he overthrew Zeros with a special artifact was he able to take his place. It's a really cool introduction to some of the more interesting parts of RuneScape's history and the affiliation with the gods. But that's not the coolest part. The coolest part, if you ask me, are the teleports that you gain when you get the ancient magics after completing the quest. In RuneScape's basic spellbook, you have a number of teleports that each take you to a different city. One might take you to Varrock, which is a major hub on the eastern side of the world, while another might take you to Camelot Castle, where you can go and do those quests for King Arthur. But the ancient magic spellbook teleport you to weird places, places that are either dead towns on the verge of collapse and have very little to do in them, or sometimes places that aren't even anywhere near a town at all. These spells themselves also have strange names like Padawa Teleport, Kahril Teleport, no places that exist in RuneScape, and these names don't come up anywhere else in the game. Why do these teleports exist? What purpose do they serve? What are these ridiculous names? I mean, some of these are kind of near somewhat useful places, but most really aren't. Why are they in the game? But then it hits you. I'm not teleporting to main cities or any city that exists right now because these spells were forged and used before any current city was ever founded. I'm teleporting to where Zeros's ancient cities and fortresses used to be. When I realized that as a kid, that blew my ever-loving mind. It completely suspended my disbelief. I forgot I was ever playing a video game. I'm using ancient magics to teleport to grounds that used to house magnificent cities and fortresses that the rest of the world has completely forgotten that nobody on the planet knows existed other than me. How cool is that? It's small things like this that introduce RuneScape's historians to the tales of the past that starts getting them interested in uncovering the lore, but the great part of it is none of it is shoved down a player's throat. Have you ever played an MMO that starts off with cutscene after cutscene where fictional deity after fictional deity is thrown at you with all these made-up names and made-up cities and stories that you have no investment in and you have no idea why you about anything? Her name, Kate Orzian. For the Orzian history, chart the rise of a succession of great civilizations. 1572, of the sixth and most God recent astral amassed a great army at the heart of Eorzea. Yeah, have you ever had that happen? That's not the way to do lore. The way to do lore in a video game is to craft a deep, exciting, thrilling, and intense history and then hide it away from everyone. Shoving the story down your players' throats with intro cinematics and all these cutscenes will only frustrate those that don't want lore to be a part of their gameplay experience, while simultaneously making it really difficult for those that do want lore to feel invested in it at all. We haven't discovered or explored this world for ourselves yet, don't try and make us care about something that we have zero investment in. By hiding the story away and merely giving clues to players that it exists throughout the gameplay is what really gets those interested in lore invested in it, while not having the negative effect of disrupting the gameplay for those who don't care. In MMOs, this is certainly how you want to do it, but this extends to other genres as well. With the League of Legends example, naming items after people and places and giving them significance in the lore and possibly a description to go along with it in-game would do a great job of getting players a little interested, showing them that there are stories that go beyond League's gameplay if you're interested in uncovering them for yourself. Riot actually almost did a really good job with their most recent lore event where they disabled Gangplank after he died in the lore, but that disrupted gameplay way too much. What they should have done was forced everyone to play his ghostly skin so the gameplay remained intact and everyone could still play the rework that just came out and was a pretty big part of the whole event anyway, while still being shown that something big happened in the lore, that a very huge event happened that gets a lot of people interested. What the hell? This champion died? What happened? Yeah, that's something that's really exciting. Crafting amazing stories and leaving them dormant for players to discover is the way that you want to do lore, and I hope we see more video games in the future catch on to that, because when lore is done right, it can be oh so thrilling. Anyway, that's all for today's video. I hope you guys all enjoyed watching. I'll see you all tomorrow, but until then, thank you very much for watching. Good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.